Big week of gains behind us, more than 6% higher on the S&P. Your thoughts on whether that's more than just a bear market rally or not? No, unfortunately, Jonathan, I think our perspective is, is that this is a classical bear market uh, rally. Uh, you know, if you look at things, you know, one of the narratives of bear markets is that you actually have to eliminate uh, the vast majority of the negative catalysts. And, and you know, the single biggest one that is still out there um, is a recalibration of earnings expectations. Um, you know, we've gone through this period. It's the most radical pivot um, in central bank history in terms of the speed and magnitude and, and quite frankly, acceleration uh, of monetary policy. Uh, economists have begun to cut their top-down economic forecasts for GDP, uh, and yet, uh, you know, fundamental company analysts are sitting there like deer in headlights, not knowing what to do with numbers, and we're still looking uh, at corporate earnings expectations that look, depending on what sectors you're looking at, you know, 13 to 15 percent year-over-year uh, profit growth off of 2021, which which was an all-time high for operating profit margins and for profits as a share of U.S. GDP. Um, we just don't see how, how we don't get an, uh, a recalibration here um, from the analysts that take the E in, in the pre-E's down. Elisa, let's build on this. Your colleague, Mike Wilson, wrote the following over the weekend into this week. He said this, falling yield to lower oil prices have lowered the terminal rate for the Fed. Last week, the market took the bullish view, which may last a few more weeks. Perhaps we get another rally from here, Lisa, but ultimately went on to say exactly what you're saying before the reality of lower earnings arrives and the bear market resumes. Now, Lisa, the pushback I got this morning when I put that work of yours out there with Mike Wilson was ultimately, how haven't they brought their earnings down already? And Lisa, I know that you've been thinking about that too. Why is this the case when these issues are so well understood, so talked about all the time, every single morning on programs like this one, across networks like this and others too? Lisa, yeah, it still hasn't happened. Why not? Well, you know, I, I think that there are a couple of reasons. I think, you know, first off, um, there's no doubt that it is an extraordinarily tough environment in which to forecast. Uh, and so, you know, I think I think that there's a little bit of a wait and see. And I think people are are um, very, very focused on on second and third quarter earnings um, and the commentary by management and guidance. Um, the second piece, and you know, this is the, a refinement of of how uh, reliant uh, bottom up. At, uh, analysts have become on corporate guidance. Um, it is just horrifying uh, that there is very little proactivity among the bottoms-up analysts to go out on a limb and cut numbers anymore without um, corporate management's telling them exactly what to do. Um, and that's problematic in terms of, you know, their value proposition uh, to investors because it's not particularly helpful.